I've been working on my short game for about four weeks now, and I just set my personal best for the bump and run, how many shots I can put inside of a three-foot circle in a row. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. In today's episode, I'm going to show you some of the work that I've been doing with my short game in the last four weeks using the Short Game Mastery Program as designed by Jim Bonettos. First of all, let me say thanks to everybody who's subscribed and watching all the videos that I post. I post weekly content. If you're new to the channel this is the first time you've watched, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below and then click the bell notification off to the right so you're notified of all the new videos that I post. As I said, I post once a week. This is not always every seven days but there's at least one video a week and sometimes I do course vlogs sometimes it'll be short game work sometimes it'll be range practice sometimes it might be gear reviews or just sort of my personal thoughts on golf and the state of the game I get out on the putting green once a week now this putting green is really fast compared to the greens that I normally play but one day a week for at least an hour, I try and get out and put around different putts. I start with three foot putts all around the hole. Some of them are straight up the hill, some of them go down the hill. Uh, and then I work on some longer putts, some lag putts. And the speed on this green is really quick, as I said. With these putts here this day, uh, I really was not lining it up. I wasn't getting behind the putts. I wasn't checking for the break and reading it and setting it in and lining it up. This was just going on feel and trying to get the ball in the hole based on what I felt in my feet and what I saw from standing over the ball. Uh, speed control is all I think about once I line it up. Uh, that part is over and then all I think about is pace. I'm just trying to get it to the hole with the right amount of speed and I forget all about line. In this particular uh, session today, I was having a, a pretty good time with the short putts and I was having a little bit of an issue with the longer putts, but I try to keep my weight focused more on my right foot and stay stable through the putting stroke. I'm putting up a couple of steel shots here of Jim performing the bump and run shot green side. Generally, he puts the ball in the middle of his stance for the bump and run and more toward the front foot for the pitch. Now, these can all be changed, of course, depending on lie and how you want the ball to spin and how you'd like the trajectory to come out. But as a general rule of thumb, that's kind of the way he views ball position for those shots. Here I'm going to show you my record. Uh, this is... Uh, this is me hitting the bump and run with a pitching wedge. I'm only a couple of paces off of the green, and I'm not going for this flag in the foreground here. That's just one that's close to me. I'm actually going toward the one all the way on the other side. Um, I'm just showing you these here so that you can see my setup is the same for every shot. I'm putting my weight on the left foot, as always, and I'm staying still over the ball, and I'm just trying to let the club come down into the back of the ball and give it that shallow, descending and circular strike as he talks about in his videos over and over. Uh, the results here are really consistent. They're really good. As long as I don't move, I don't cause any unnecessary problems in the, in the bump and run or the pitch for that matter. And it's easy to apply it to the bump and run and the pitch. Those are fairly easy shots in comparison to full shots. Stillness is of course much easier to achieve because you're making a much smaller swing. So that's why he always recommends starting with these for your warm-up, any of your range sessions. If you're going to go out and play, you start with the bump and run. You always work on that and just develop that small swing as he envisions that to be the microcosm of the larger swing. It's just uh, basically a magnification when you're trying to hit the ball a longer way with a longer club. Um, today, you know, st stage one. Stage one mastery is nine in a row. Stage two mastery is 18 in a row with one make. I didn't make any, but I had two that were really close. They were really close. One actually lipped out and one hit the flag. Um, just tapped it and somehow did not go in. I'm not sure how, but I made 14 in a row here and that's my personal best up until this point. I do make some from time to time, but on this day I didn't make any. However, 14 in a row inside of a three foot circle with the bump and run, pretty great for me. Now I'll move on to the other side of the green, going back toward the flag you saw in the foreground in the previous shot. Uh, this is a combination of pitches and lobs. Now, Jim says that he doesn't want you practicing the lob too often because, quite frankly, the lob is a get-out-of-trouble card. Um, you've basically short-sighted yourself or you're on the wrong side of a bunker, you don't have much green to work with, 
and you need the ball to stop fairly quickly. And the lob does just that. It flies about 80%, rolls out about 20%. Te generally, uh, you know, sometimes you can open the face a little bit more, lay it wide open, what he calls three thirds open, and play that. But that's a really high tax shot, and you don't want to play that too often. So. In this, in this shot, you're going to see a mix of pitches and lobs. They're mostly pitches, and you'll be able to see the height difference that I get from this angle. Uh, when I'm playing the pitch, it's coming in about midways up that flag stick, and it's landing maybe six feet onto the green, and then it's rolling out the rest of the way. Some of them I bring in low, some of them I bring in on a mid-pitch shot, sort of a stock pitch shot, and then some of them I'm opening the face either one-third or two-thirds to play a lob. Uh, this grass over here is, uh, it's a Bermuda grass and it's sort of a medium cut. It's not a deep rough, but it's also not the fairway either. And uh, in general, you're trying to put ball position for this shot in a place where your club can access it and get to it without being, you know, encumbered by the, the grass getting around the face and the hosel and trying to tangle it up. So, you know, there's different ball positions that I'm playing here in my stance. The face is either square, one-third open, or two-thirds open. I didn't play any three-thirds open on this day, again, because it's just such a high-tax shot. I don't really want to practice it that often because I don't want to be in that position. If you've left yourself short-sided on the green, meaning you've got a short distance to carry or maybe a medium distance to carry and you don't have much green to work with, You've made a mistake in your strategy before you even got to the green, and you really need to go back and examine that and see where you're leaving the ball. Uh, generally with the pitch, what you're trying to do is put it inside of a five-foot circle. So level one mastery for that is to put nine in a row inside of a five-foot circle. These all didn't land inside of that, but they were all generally good shots. In the last four weeks, I've been working on my short game at least twice a week. I've been stopping by this new place that I found, as you know from watching the other videos. My driving range in the short game area that I was stopping at closed down. Um, I've been here for four months in this new house, and uh, that was kind of a bummer because that was a great practice facility, and uh, I loved it. So I've had to find a new venue, and there is a golf course not too far from here. Um, I don't play it because it's too expensive for me to play, quite frankly. Um, but it has a great short game facility where you can pitch and chip and even hit some uh, some 40 and 50 yard pitches into a green. It's got a green side bunker that you can work on and it also has a large putting green. And as I said, the speed on that green is pretty fast compared to what I normally play. So it's really good practice to, uh, to get over the ball and have sort of that tense putt that really messes with your mind and you're really worried about sending it eight feet past the hole on a short putt. Um, but I stopped by there. It's on my way home from work, and uh, I stopped by there and work on my short game at least twice a week. I start out with the bump and run, and some days all I do is the bump and run and then putting. Uh, and then the next day I'll usually do start out with the bump and run again, and then I'll move on to the pitch, and I'll throw in a few lobs here and there. So now that I've been working on it for four weeks, have I noticed a difference? Oh, yeah. Short game has gotten much better, much more reliable. And I'm not always knocking it stiff, you know, if, if I get into a position where I've got to save par and get up and down and, and get my scrambling percentage up, am I always going to put it inside of a three or a five foot circle? No, um, it's, not, it's not happening all the time, but it is far more frequent and the confidence that I have over the ball to know that I'm going to get it up on the green in a position to have a decent putt at it and leave it in a good position. I've got total confidence now, and that's that's just huge because if you if you get your short game and your putting right, then it really takes pressure off of your approach shots. And if it takes pressure off of your approach shots, then it can take pressure off of your tee shots as well. It can really just work its way down through the bag and affect your entire game, and that's a really good thing. So number one is my confidence on the short game shots has gotten just much, much higher than it was before I started, and the results are pretty good too. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, I appreciate all the support and all the comments that you guys give me. Be sure to give me a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and click the bell notification. I'm trying to grow the channel and get to a thousand and then move on from there. Once you get to a thousand, you can become legitimate and maybe more people will discover it. And I really feel that the work that I'm doing with Jim can help a lot of people. I feel like Jim himself can help a lot of people. If you haven't signed up for his school, I would highly recommend you do so. 
even if you don't stick with it, even if you don't use all of the things he teaches you, there's an abundance of stuff that he can tell you about strategy and just course management and the mental game and all that to it as well. I would consider joining the Academy. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.